All right, who's fired up to be in the house of God this weekend? Wow, it is great to see you. Let me tell you a story. Sarah, a young lady, found herself in a very difficult situation. She stopped by, came to worship at the Farragut campus because in a very difficult time in her life, she saw a social media post that one of the promisers put out. She was nine months pregnant, had no idea what she was going to do. She was so afraid that when she came, she would be judged. And when she made her first visit at Faith Promise, she said, I felt the love from the first moment. And it's the first time I felt a church show me the love of Jesus. Come on, somebody. <clears throat> because of that, she gave her heart to Jesus that weekend. And then, amen, but... Two weeks later, she was kicked out of where she was living. She had no place to go, a baby due in just a few days. But because she was at a Faith Promise campus, a couple at Farragut campus took her in for a few nights, and then she went to the home of another couple who, had, who are promisers at the Farragut campus, and she stayed with them for six months while they helped her get a job and and find a place to stay for the long, for over the long haul, find a permanent home. Come on. She was given everything she needed, food, clothing, a place to stay, and raise her little baby, Zoe. Since, she's joined a group, she's gotten involved, she's growing, she's stepping into her place of service at Faith Promise Church, and she is making a difference. Come on, somebody. That is what we're all about. That's what the church should be about. But in this current time in America, it is not what the church is known for. Lately, what we've been known for is losing. Losing attendance in COVID, losing credibility with scandal after scandal in the media, losing priority on people's calendars, and losing our place, our voice in the culture in which we live. Now, the church should be the most winning people on the planet. Not because of what we do, but because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. We should be winning. It's, it's because he saved us, he healed us, he set us free, to, and put his love in our hearts to love people like Sarah. He loved us so that we could love others. That's why I couldn't be more excited about the future of the Faith Promise family and what your part is in advancing the kingdom of God. Now, we have an incredibly rich heritage, and we have got a rich history, but the best is yet to come. Come on, somebody. I believe revival is coming. And so as we move and the next generation rises up in leadership and they are all across the board of faith promise, we must maintain the faith of the founders who were willing to sacrifice, lay it on the line to build this church, this movement called faith promise. And we've got to see that elevated in the next generation that basically are, are taking leadership across so much of what God is doing. We got to keep walking in the faith of the founders. Father God, we come to you because you're the giver of every good and perfect gift. And Lord, we look back at what you have done and we are awestruck. But God, we are faith struck as we look for the future. We look for the, we look for the next days to be the greatest days. We're looking for revival. We're looking to love you and love people. We're looking for you to show up and show out. We're looking for miracles. We're looking for people to be saved. God, what an incredible day it is to be a part of what you're doing. So let us experience you in these next moments as our prayer in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. welcome, Faith Promise, all of our campuses. So excited you're with us online. God, behind bars, man, we're so super stoked that you chose to be with us this weekend. All, all this month, we're in a series called All We Do Is Win. Last week, Pastor Zach began to lay this out for us. And if you missed last weekend, we covered our new vision and our first value of our four 
values. If you missed it, do me a favor, go back and get it. You download it, it's free. Go to our website, go to our app, and you can get it. Our new mission, our new vision statement is, it's on the wall. We exist to win the world by equipping Christ's followers to do what? Win their world, starting with 1% of the state of Tennessee. The value we talked about last weekend was love God. It is the most important command in the canon. In the Old and the New Testament, it is the most important command that we have. Uh, it, is, it is out of Deuteronomy chapter six and verse five. And that is this, we are to, you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. It's called the Shema. It is considered the most important text or, or passage in the Older Testament. And after 40 years now, can I tell you, it has served me personally well, loving God. As I read the scriptures over and over, it has for thousands of years served people well, and if you're in the Bible reading plan with us right now, you're watching Israel on this cycle of loving God, following idols, loving God. The people that loved God fared much better than the people that didn't. I'm just telling you, loving God has served people for thousands of years. It is a value, or the most important biblical value, and it should be a, a value that you wrap your life around. It's not just something that hangs on the wall, it's what happens down the hall. It's a value that defines who we are. It's a value that defines me. It should be a value that defines all of us. So as we go over this month, our four values, love God last weekend, love people this weekend, I want to challenge you to get them, put them on your fridge. Let them be the values you teach your kids. You just teach them the most important thing in your life is loving God. Most important thing in your life, loving God. Second most important thing, loving people. See, vision crafts where we go and values clarify what we do. So we, as we look at the next 25 years, which is sort of what we're going to lay out in this series, I'm, just, I'm encouraged you, don't miss a, a message. Again, if you missed last weekend, go back and get it. The 21st, which is in two weekends, is probably the most important message I've ever preached at Faith Promise. Be here that weekend, you don't want to miss it. By the way, it's T-shirt weekend. If we could buy t-shirts every weekend, we'd be the, we'd be the biggest church in America. Because everybody comes for t-shirts. I don't understand. But now here's the deal. If you're new, you got to be here to get one. Nobody's taking yours. Every year, people try to steal, steal church t-shirts. You cannot wear a stolen t-shirt that's a church shirt. Are you with me? It just breaks all the rules. So you gotta be here that week, it's gonna be so important. So our second value flows out of our first value. We love people. We love people. See, loving people flows from loving God. His love is poured out in us, right? And then we pour that love out on everybody that we see. As Christ followers, we, we, we read the scriptures and we see God loving people. We see Jesus loving people all the way to the point of laying down his life on a cross. He loved people that hated him. He loved the people that rejected him. And for each of us, come on, all of us, we, we love him because he first loved us. Romans 5, 8, God demonstrated his love toward us and that while we were sinners, while we were odds and an enemy with him, Christ died for us, 1 John 419, we love God because God first loved us. That's so his love is poured out into us. Then Jesus is asking Matthew chapter 22 to sort of clarify the command. A lawyer asks him in verse 35, what's the most important command? And in verse 36, or in verse 36, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. We read that in Deuteronomy chapter six and verse five. He's quoting it. And the second, the, the, this is the great and foremost commandment, and the second's like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depends the whole law and the prophets. This Bible, 
Bible is a library. There are 66 books that make up this Bible, this canon that we call the Bible. And we talk about how complicated and how difficult it is. Jesus broke every page down in two commandments. Love God, love people. Love God, love people. Love God, love people. That's what we do. Are you with me? Love God, love people. If you read the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will see Jesus live this out every day. Can I just go ahead and tell you, Jesus loved people when it wasn't fair. But see, we want life to be fair, don't we? Come on, don't your kids say it all the time, it's not fair, and we're screaming fair, and, and it's not fair. Jesus loved people when it wasn't fair. Jesus loved people when it wasn't justified. Jesus loved people when it was hard. See, Jesus said, listen, it's easy. Jesus said Gentiles love people to love them back. It's easy to love people that are gonna give it back to you. It's easy to buy somebody a present because when it's your birthday, they're gonna get you one. It's easy to give when they're gonna give back. Jesus said, listen, if you follow me, you're gonna love unlovely. You're gonna love people that can't do anything back for you. Imagine they are crucifying you and you say, Father, forgive them for they don't even know what they're doing. Is that how you would respond to somebody that just skins you alive and was nailing you to a cross? See, Jesus showed us how to love people, forgive them. This easy preaching and really hard living, isn't it? This easy theory, very difficult in practice. So Jesus goes over and over. I'm gonna give you more scripture than I, than I normally give you uh, so I'm just gonna give you a ton of the word of God and I'm gonna make comments just sort of here and there. Uh, John 15, verse 12 said this, this is my commandment that you love one another just as I've loved you. Greater love has no one than this than one lay down his life for his friends. Go back to two chapters of chapter 13, verse 34, a new commandment that I give to you that you do what? Love one another. Even as I have loved you, you, that you should also love one another. And by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Now, the puzzling thing is that Jesus calls this a new commandment. Well, that's odd. Because if you go back a few thousand years to Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18, the, the law given by Moses, God gave Moses, you shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself, I'm the Lord. So why did Jesus say a new commandment that I gave you that you love one another, when it's not a new commandment, that commandment was thousands of years old, why would he call it a new commandment? Because when I read the Bible and stuff doesn't make sense, I just say, God, I don't, I don't get that. And you know what I believe the Spirit of the Lord gave me? He called it a new commandment because nobody had done it. Nobody was living it. Man, you read the book of Psalms, kill all my enemies. Rip their tongues out, slash them, dash. Are y'all with you? Ever read that Old Testament? And Jesus said, hey, listen, love, love. It's what's gonna mark you. Now, if you're new, we have a theme every year. And our theme this year is transformation, we find it in Romans 12. We also have another verse for you, but Romans 12, we find this is transformation. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice. So see, your life is not your own. You gave your life to God, right? Right? Every day you give it to God, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. It's what you're supposed to do. And do not be conformed to this world, which this world is conditional love. Love people and they love you back. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. Now, transformation. In that, our phrase this year, the hand that holds you. See, if, you're, if, if God is holding you, then he's molding you. What's God molding you into? So if he's, gonna, if he's gonna transform us, what's he gonna transform us into? So are you someone that loves God so much that his love is poured out through you to everyone that you meet? Because that's what the transformation. Now I didn't connect the dots till I was working on this message. That out of this, I just hadn't put 
Romans 12, 1 and 2 in context with the chapter or this paragraph that is written for us. So he goes on, look at verse 3. For this, for through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think. Could we camp out right here for about a year? Are you with me? I can't tell what some people look like because they've got a camera in front of their face taking their own picture all the time. Are y'all with me? We take 100, we delete 99, and then we put the one through filters until it looks like, so, like an angelic being glowing. And then we post that, having a tough day. Are y'all with me? Let me tell you why it's so hard to love other people, because we're in the mirror all the time. So what does he say? Don't, look, look, I know it's tough. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna get worse before it gets better. <laughs> Do not think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. See, the, one of the reasons why we don't love people is not that we think too little of others, is that we think of ourselves too much. And it's hard to love other people when your focus is all on you. Thinking too highly of yourself stops up and sabotages the flow of God's love to others through you. So when right there in the same paragraph that we talk about transformation is don't think of yourselves so much. Think about other people. See, it's hard to treat, it's hard to love other people, especially those that treat you badly when you are the center of the universe and the unpardonable sin is not being nice to you. Well, I can't love him, man. Look how they look how they treated me. Look, he goes on. Now we can really camp out of here. Verse nine of chapter twelve, Romans. Let love see again. We're still in the we're still in the context of transformation. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another and brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor, not lagging behind in diligence. And what kind of diligence? Not loving people, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality, opening up your home to Sarah's. Saying, hey, you can stay at my house. Well, it, it's okay. Hospitality, bless, bless those who persecute you. Bless them and do not curse Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Don't be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Never pay back evil for, to, to, for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, as far as it depends on you, be at peace with everybody. Love people. Are you with me? Can we agree it's biblical to love people? That means all people. Red, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in his sight. Love people. You say, but pastor, you don't understand what they have done to me. No, you don't understand what you did to him. He's forgiven you more than anyone will ever do to you. And because of that, we can love people. See, when you are full of God's love, his love spills out to everybody. You, you just spill it on people. You spill it. Jesus said it was the demarcation. Jesus said love was the difference for his followers. In John 13, they'll know you're my disciples when you love, when you love each other. Are y'all with me? In Philippians chapter two, he goes on to try to help us to accomplish this. In Philippians two, Verse three, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as what? More important than yourself. Listen, when you think less of you and more about others, life improves immediately. Verse four, do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but, for the, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus 
who although he, for, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself and taking the form of a servant. What did he do? He died on a cross. Come on. We're to have that attitude. Let me give you another, another chapter that you know only so well, 1 Corinthians 13. Again, just, just hammering verses. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, if I'm the greatest preacher, the greatest orator that has ever held a Bible, but I do not have love, I become a noisy gong or, I, or a clanging cymbal. I'm just noise. It doesn't matter how good I am. If I don't have love, it doesn't matter. If I have the gift of prophecy and I know all mysteries and all knowledge, but if, but if I have, all, and if I have faith as to remove mountains but don't have love, I'm what? If I give all my possessions to feed the poor and if I surrender my body to be burned but I do not have love, it profits me. And this is what I do. I've said it before, but, but as it goes on right here, Wherever it says love, I just put my name to just see how I'm doing. Are y'all with me? So this is how I read this. Chris is patient. <laughs> no. <laughs> Chris, yeah, okay, it's good. Chris is kind. Okay, Michelle's here, so no. <laughs> if she wasn't in this service, I could tell you I was. But come on, we all lie a little. Uh, if uh, love, love does not brag, Chris does not brag. Chris is, Chris is not jealous. Chris is not arrogant. Chris doesn't act unbecomingly. Chris does not seek his own. He is not easily provoked, and he does not take into account a wrong suffered. <laughs> I'm going to go to the back room and repent. <laughs> Chris does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoice through the truth. Chris bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Chris never fails. See, put your name in there because love never fails. Love trumps the gifts. Love trumps. Come on, are y'all with me? We love God and we love what? Come on, anybody here saved? Come on, all of our, anybody here? Come on, let me hear you. Anybody here saved? All right then let me commission you, you are an ambassador of the love of God. So you get up in the morning, you spend time with God, you get full of God's love, you spill it out all day long. Get up in the next morning, you're empty because you just poured it out. Doesn't matter how people treat you, doesn't matter when they pull in front of you, I do it all the time. People break in front of line, I look at Michelle and say, they're more important than us. I try to let him hear it, but I just say they're... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? See, let me, so it's hard to love others when, you, when you're completely focused on, let me give you a second. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. Some of us can't love our neighbor because we don't love us. So you can't love anybody when you don't love you. And if you don't love you, let me tell you why. Listen, come on, if you're listening, say I am. Listen, if you don't love you, it's because you don't see you as God sees you. You see you through the lens of Lucifer that has lied to you your whole life. The devil said you're not worthy. The devil said you're not valuable. The devil said you're trash. The devil said you'll never admit to anything. Listen, and God said, if you're born again, you are forgiven. I have forgotten every sin you have ever committed. Every sin. There's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no walking around beating yourself doing penance because God forgot when you told him he threw your sin as far as the east is from the west. Are you with me? Yeah. See, you are forgiven. Not only are you forgiven, but you're adopted. See, if you have a biological kid, you just get whatever comes out. Isn't that right? Do you pick the color of your kid's eyes? Do you pick the hair color? How tall? No, you just got whatever popped out. And I got a mica. <laughs> I'm telling you, life's not fair. And so you, so you, you, but when you adopt someone, listen to me, you pick them. You went to the adoption place. You walked down the hall and you said, I want that one right there. God walked into the adoption 
clinic of this world and he walked down your road to your street to your house and he said, I want you, I pick you. You're going to be mine. I'm going to adopt you. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to love you. You're going to be my son, my daughter, my chosen one, the apple of my eye. Come on, somebody. You can love you because God loves you. And then as you love you, you can love other people. It gets easy. Even when they act a fool. And a lot of them do. That's all right. I'm going to love them anyway. I'm just going to love them anyway. So if we went to where you live, work, study, shop, and play, we would ask people, does love mark you? What would they say? Would they say, oh, yeah, man. He, oh, yeah. Because, see, love draws people to you. That's why people came to Jesus. Religion repels and love lures. Lures people. Are, see, are you full of God's spirit so that you can know God's supernatural love and give it? So it's so easy to run dry, so it's why we gotta get with God every day. You need to be filled with that supernatural love so that you can give it away. See, if you've been transformed by this amazing love, then you need to share and give it. Let me tell you what some of us need to do with this message. There's some of us that are on the sidelines. You've been on the sidelines since COVID. You used to have people who led groups and then people backed out of ministry at COVID and you're still sitting on the sidelines, time to get in. So we give everybody an opportunity as we get ready for our fall alignment where we align the weekend and small group ministry, you can step out and you can lead. There's a they're in your, every other seat, there's a card. Fill that card out at the end of this service. Take it to any one of our, at all the campuses. Take it to the foyer and they'll, they'll share with you what you can do. They're just, just, just gonna help you. If you say, hey, I'm not, I'm not sure if I can do that. Let me tell you what you can do. You can love people. If you're born again. If you're not born again, you can't pe- love people that don't love you because it takes supernatural love to people to love people that hate you. And so we want to help get people in groups. Why? To connect people in community so that they can grow. To protect people by prayer and community so they can experience God's love. Tell people grow and take them in their, help them take their next steps in following Jesus. Does this make sense? See, getting involved with a group, it's not just about somebody's going to be there for you. It's about you learning to love God and you learning to love people. It's an incredible place to start. See, when, when we're full of God's love, God could send us so many Sarahs that need somebody to love them. But if we're not gonna love them, God's gonna send them somewhere else where they will. We might as well be the church known for loving people. Are you with me? Come on, somebody. So. I'm gonna pray for us, campus pastors, if you guys will make your way forward because there's some people that want to experience that supernatural love. Father God, we come to you right now. and We just say thank you for loving us. Thank you for adopting us. There's some people right now, Father, that are about to get their new adoption papers in the next few minutes. God, I pray that you would help us see people like you see them. Not what they've done to us, but they were created in your image. They were created for better. God, let faith promise be marked by love that the world can't deny. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said,